Hey, so we've looked at some floating point stuff and what we're going to do is we're going to look a little bit more of that. Um, rather than going from decimal to binary, we're going to go from binary back to decimal. So as our example, we're going to start with an 8-bit word. We're going to start with 1010110. One, zero, one, one, zero, zero. Now this is all about going back to that formula. Let's have a, a reminder that was m times b to the e. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to separate out the parts. So we know that this is the sign of our mantissa and this one is our mantissa. So it's minus um, and we can remember that that was a normalized mantissa so we can put the decimal point. So it was minus 0 0.1100 and this is binary so it's a base of 2. And then 0, 010 0 is our um, our exponent. Now 0, 010, 0, we know that that is a 2's complement. Uh, the leftmost bit is a 0, and so that is a positive number. So let's just have another look. That is times 2 to the power of a positive 2. Um, and 0 0.11, uh, we might need our binary scale to have a look at what that one is. So we've got our little binary scale down the bottom and we've got, so we, this is our separation point and we've got 1, 1, 0, 0. So when we add 0.5 and 0.25 together, we get 0.75. Now from our maths background, we know that 2 to the power of 2 is 4. So if we take a negative 0.75 and we multiply that by 4, you can use a calculator, we get a result of negative 3. Okay, so hopefully you were able to follow that. It's the exact same steps that we had before, um, except in reverse order. So let's just have a look at another example. Okay, so I've got my binary scale down the bottom there, just, uh, just ready to go. Now we're going to use an 8-bit word. We've got 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. So first of all, let's get it into our formula of m times b to the e. Now this is a positive mantissa, so we've got 0 0.1001 times 2. And now our exponent here, our leftmost bit is 1. We know that's a 2's complement, so we've got to figure out what it is the negative of. So let's have a look, 1, 1, 1. We keep it all the same until the first 1. We keep the first 1 and we change everything after that. So it is a negative 0, 1, which is the same as a negative 1. Um, okay, let's keep going. Now, 0 0.1001, we've got 1, 0, 0, 1 in our binary scale. And we're going to add together 0 0.5 and 0 0.0625, and that ends up with 0.5625. And we're timesing it by 2 to the minus 1. Now just to quickly um, have a look at what that is, with our binary scale, 1 is 2 to the 0, 2 is 2 to the 1, 4 is 2 to the 2, and if we go backwards, 0.5 is 2 to the minus 1, 0.25 is 2 to the minus 2, and so on. So we know that we're actually multiplying it by 0.5. So let, let's pop that in, 2 to the minus 1 is 0.5. And you can grab your calculator for this. This one, once we multiply it out, should end up being 0 0.28125. Fantastic. Now, I just want to mention that in these examples, I've used an 8-bit word for representing these floating point numbers. But in reality, you wouldn't actually use 8 bits. You'd use a lot more than that because using 8 bits, we actually can't cover very many numbers. So as an example, let's talk about Java. Java has, for floating point numbers, it has two variables, sorry, two data types. So floating point in Java. So we have two data types. We've got float and we've got double. So they are the two that are used in Java for storing floating point numbers. Now a float will use 32 bits of information and a double will use 
double the precision of a float, so it will use 64 bits of information. Now, understanding these representations, it's really important that we understand that um, floating point doesn't allow us to represent information precisely. So when you're doing very exact calculations, you may get results that are slightly out of whack. Um, I'll give you a quick example of where this might be. So let's say we had to add the numbers 0.4 and 0.4. Now we know that that should equal to 0.8. But let's do our conversion of what 0.4 is in, in binary. So we go 0.4 times 2 equals 0 0.8. 0.8 times 2 is equal to 1.6. 0.6 times 2 is equal to 1.2. 0.2 times 2 is equal to 0 0.4. 0 0.4 times 2 is equal to um, 0 0.8. 0 0.8 times 2 is equal to 1.6 and so on. So we've got 0 0.011. 001 plus 0 0.011001 and 1 and 1 is 0, we're carrying the 1. 100 one zero zero is 1, 0, 0 carry the 1, 1 carry the 1. Now if we were to add this up, we've got 0 0.5, which is that one, we've got 0 0.25, oops, hang on. My little eraser tool is not agreeing with me, so I'll put it over here. We've got 0 0.5, which is that first one. Then the second one is 0 0.25. And if we were to look across our scale, the next one is 0 0.03125. If we would add those up, we'd get 5, 2, 1, 8, 7. So our result is 0 0.78125, which is quite different from our point 0.8. Now obviously the more bits that we use to represent a number, the more precise our result is going to be. But when we use floating point numbers, this is just something that we have to bear in mind. It's just a consideration. Alright, thanks for following the floating point.